Everybody's always gonna want and need air conditioning, depending on the climate, whether it's air conditioning or heating. I mean, that job is pretty stable. I live in Corona, California. I'm an HVAC technician at Next Gen Heating and Air Conditioning. I make anywhere from 80 to $120,000 a year. We're gonna review how you can make 80K plus a year repairing air conditioning systems. This is a CNBC make it video that I came across and I love reviewing these videos because these are blue collar people that have no formal education or college degrees but yet they're making fantastic money and I love to share this kind of stuff because I think it's just fantastic. Let's see how this guy makes 80K a year working in HVAC. Everybody's always gonna want and need air conditioning, depending on the climate, whether it's air conditioning or heating. I mean, that job is pretty stable. With all this experience I have now, I do consider myself a experienced tech. I take pride in having an excellent reputation online. My Yelp reviews are through the roof. I actually get a lot of referrals through customers. My name is Roger Quadra. I live in Corona, California. I'm an HVAC technician at Next Gen Heating and Air Conditioning. I make anywhere from 80 to $120,000 a year. 80 to $120,000 a year. Dude, people sleep on HVAC. He mentioned earlier about everyone needs heating and air conditioning, no matter what building you're in, your house or commercial building, industrial building, it doesn't matter. Everybody needs it, or at least everybody wants it. So. It's such an essential trade, whether like it's whether you're doing residential, commercial, industrial, it doesn't matter. HVAC is needed everywhere. Roger installs and repairs air conditioning, heating, and air purification systems in homes. From diagnosing unusual problems to fixing older systems that need repairs to long hours in 110 degree attics, the job can be tough. The majority of the time, I work six days a week. On a typical day, Roger makes about $336 in commission. That's one of the biggest things customers do not understand in this industry. It's skilled labor. Skilled labor is not cheap. You're not necessarily paying for the part. You're paying for my knowledge and my service, plain and simple. Yeah, exactly. I think any homeowner knows that if they have to get anything done fix on their house, whether that's plumbing, electrical, HVAC, uh, doesn't matter, like carpentry stuff, it's not cheap. And there's a reason, like he's saying, you're not paying for the part. You can go pay for the part yourself and go to Home Depot and uh, buy any part for your house for the most part for X amount of dollars. What you're paying for is a skilled labor. If you can do it yourself, do it yourself. But <laughs> that's why you hire somebody else because you don't know how to do it yourself. That's why skilled labor professionals are so important. People out there need these skilled tradesmen to do these jobs. Roger's been working in the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, or HVAC industry, for about 12 years. Today, he's one of the top requested technicians for his company, Next Gen Air and Heat in Anaheim, California. But for Roger, getting to this point wasn't easy. I grew up in Whittier, California. I was actually born in Nicaragua, was brought over to Southeast LA County area, um, Santa Fe Springs, Whittier. One of my first jobs out of high school was at a Food for Less. I was a bag boy and making about $7.25 an hour. High school was an adventure. I didn't take it serious, to be completely honest. Even though I was trying to stay on the right track, you know, my family did sacrifice a lot to, you know, bring us out to the United States. Being the oldest, my dad would sometimes take me to his job and um, he encouraged me to get into mechanics. You know, he was a mechanic our life. To this day, he's a mechanic. Well, I think about him a lot sometimes when I'm actually working, just those moments that, you know, we shared when he would take me to his job. I joined the workforce after high school and, um, you know, started doing, you know, little construction jobs and really dead end jobs, to be completely honest. Things turned around for Roger in 2009 when he found an HVAC distribution center looking for a driver. I went in there, talked to the front desk guy, um, which is Ishmael Valdez, and um, asked for an application. I actually came in every single day for the next five days. His persistence paid off. Roger got the job as the driver. 
That's a very important key point. A lot of you out there who want to get a job, it doesn't honestly really matter what trade. It doesn't even matter what job. Persistence is key. Squeaky wheel gets the grease. You show up every single day to an HVAC office, whether they actually don't even have any, maybe they don't have any uh, applications open for somebody. If you just show up like every day and you see the office lady for a week and you bring donuts one day, bring her flowers the next day, bring coffee the third day, and just say, I, I, how can I start working for you guys? After a week, I can almost guarantee they're gonna be like, how do we get this guy on board? Because he's persistently coming here. Like he, if he's gonna come day after day after day, that means he truly wants to work here. So <laughs> let's see if we can get him a job and get him started, get his foot in the door. So that's a, that's a really, really good point. There he met HVAC techs who helped him reach the next level of his career. I started getting a lot of guys like, hey man, why don't you come over here and help us out on Saturday? Start learning the ropes and whatnot. So eventually I got the opportunity to join a crew and be the third, the helper. When he started as a helper, Roger was making about $55,000 a year. He worked hard and rose from third helper to second helper to lead installer to technician in a matter of years. He's hoping to break the- See, it's the same in any other trade as the kind of the order of operations. You start as a third helper, then the second helper, then the first helper, and then the installer, and then you become the lead HVAC tech. But it takes years to get to that point. You don't just start as the lead HVAC tech. It's just like any other trade. I mean, you're gonna start as a groundman, then a first, the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth step apprentice, and then become a journeyman. Or So there, it's never just become the top level dog within a year. It's They always, these things take time. It doesn't matter what trade you get into. It, you, you want to be able to learn, be efficient in a skilled trade you get into. Hoping to break the $100,000 mark this year. Even while working full time as a tech, Roger continued to improve his skills. So I dedicated myself, I would go home, watch YouTube videos. I actually enrolled myself into some classes that uh, the city of Downey provides at the gas company for NAIT certifications, um, having to do with air distribution, heat pump units, uh, different types of systems that we use in the industry. Along the way, Roger stayed connected to Ishmael Valdez, who eventually branched off and started NextGen, where Roger is currently employed as a technician. Since then, Roger's experience has helped him increase his income. As far as the pay structure, it is uh, fully commissioned. You know, when you become a tech, sometimes there is those, you know, options to have an hourly wage and a partial commission. So by the way, I missed two months of last year. I, I feel confident I would have broke that 100K mark last year, but you know, I went on maternity leave. Another benefit actually that I think a lot of us take for granted is company vans. You know, we got the gas card, company trucks, so you know, less wear and tear on our own personal uh, vehicles. Then we would that's a that's a big one for a lot of people in the trades so that getting a company truck or company vehicle whether you're a foreman or you're a tech or whatever the case may be being able to drive the company vehicle with the company fuel card to and from work and it puts a lot of takes a lot of stress or whatever off your own personal vehicles i mean you're driving hours and hours a day regular you're commuting to and from work in a personal vehicle you're you're spending $100 plus a week on fuel or whatever the case may be. It's a major, major, major benefit to be able to drive a company vehicle with a company fuel card. Like, huge. Damn, muy bonito su día, guys. All right. All right, guys. All right, bro. Well, I usually wake up at 5.30 in the morning. I sometimes try to get a little jog in. I like to keep myself fit. I feel with that, it helps me have the, the energy to last all day and to deal with these 110 degree attics that we're in sometimes. I drive out to our main shop in Anaheim. I usually arrive around 6.30 or 7. Before a lot of our guys, I go through my bins, restock my, my van with you know, any parts necessary that I used the day prior. I usually have my first call around 9 a.m. in the morning. I usually call my uh, customer up, give them an ETA. I usually have about three to four calls a day. I average, uh, you know, about 12 to 14 hours a day. I usually get home around 8.30, 9.30 at night. Summer is Roger's busiest season, so he can't take time off to spend with family until December. 
So my girls know, summertime is no vacations. Summertime is all about work for me. It's my money making time. That's when I make my majority of my yearly income. What that money means for me and my family is like I have more freedom, more options. Um, I have more of a sense of uh, security for my family, my family's future, my bills, of course. <laughs> you know, I get to spoil my girls. One of the things I love is uh, being able to provide. Yeah, he also makes another great point there about summer being the, the busy season for HVAC, of course, right? Because air conditioners go out and people don't have air conditioning in the hot part of the year, right? Places in California, it's like, oh, if I don't have heating in the winter, it's not like that big of a deal because you can always dress to be hot or the AC goes out when it's 100 plus degrees outside, then it's miserable. So he dedicates his you know, his time for making the most in the years during the summertime, which is very common, like in Arizona right now. It's, I know plenty of people are working at HVAC and that's where they make all their money is during the summer months because that's when ACs are going out and that's when the money's to be made. So these are some things to get into a trade. It's like your pros and cons, uh, you know, you're going to have to give some, take some here, you know, lineman trade, whatever trade, you know, what's the busy time of the year? Do you have to work on the road? Are you working shifts? Like, what is the whole thing? So there is, there is gives and takes in the trades for sure. You're not just working Monday through Friday, you know, seven to three 30 for the most part. A lot, most trades aren't like that. The majority of the time I work six days a week. Uh, I, had, I do have an option to work on Sunday, which I take sometimes, but you know, having the seniority that I have now and you know, having a lot of new guys, I kind of hold back on Sundays now and uh, let the new guys take care of it. One of the most rewarding uh, things about this is uh, not only the money, of course, but you know, just the, the, the satisfaction I get when I um, help these people out. Uh, we have like uh, little friendly comp competitions here at the company where you know we set goals for the week for the month for the year amongst the technicians have friendly competitions to kind of reach those goals and improve at the beginning of his hvac career roger started off making fifty-five thousand dollars a year this year he's closer to breaking the hundred thousand dollar mark a goal he says contributes to his family's happiness i obviously want to provide my daughters a way different life than, than I had. So, um, you know, not, not only is it a motivation, but it's very re rewarding knowing that I am able to do that for my girls. My advice to anybody that's looking in to get into this industry would be stop thinking about it and just do it. Take that chance, uh, whatever you got going on in your life, uh, I'm pretty certain it's gonna be more beneficial to your longevity, your future, your, your financials. So do it immediately, don't be afraid, take chances. There you heard it from him right there. If you wanna get into it, just do it, take chances. You just have to do it, right? You just show up at the company and bring them donuts or coffee or whatever and just go ask for a job. That was a great video. It's very, very, very common thing for, I mean, as you saw there, like he got into working just like dead end jobs right out of high school. He didn't go to college. He didn't go to a tech school. He didn't do any of that. He just was able to get to a point where he's at now just from persistency and working hard and like wanting to move up and provide value. And he enjoyed what he did. So that's the cool thing about the trades. Probably one of the best things about the trades is not having to get caught up in the hamster wheel of going to college and getting in debt and doing all that. You can, you don't have to do all that. So that was a great video. I'll have that link, the full video for that down in the link in the description below. If you want to go watch that video yourself, it's there for you to go watch. The blueprint, I'm here to expose, teach, and educate you about blue collar career opportunities and things that'll help you in the skilled trades. And with that being said, I'll catch you on the next one.